The following is a presentation of the Belly Up Sports Media Network. We weren't here on Monday to be able to give you guys a little bit of a recap on college football in week zero. So we're going to make sure that we do that and give ourselves a little pat on the back while we're at it. And college football starts again on Thursday, which is today for you guys watching. And so we're going to have to talk about those games and some of the big games that we see there on the Thursday slate. And also we're going to get into a two minute drill where we talk about Arizona state imposing a bull ban on themselves. And we're also going to talk about a little bit more, all of this and much more today on rising to the occasion. What is up, everybody? Welcome back to another episode of Rising to the Occasion. We're so happy to have you here. We're happy to be able to be here and bring you more content, bring you more talking about the college football world. We're going to talk a little bit about the NFL and much more. We're very excited to get into it. But before we do, make sure to go over and check out Mahler Bros Golf. Mahler Bros Golf has the best golf polos and other apparel and gear. So we've got t-shirts and hats, uh, mugs, tumblers, and even the first ever that we know of golf themed coffee. So go check it out. It is some of my favorite. And in fact, I left mine over in the coffee machine right now and I was going to have some uh, during the show and it's over there. So uh, I can't reach it from here, but Mahler Bros Golf has the best. Uh, we, we, I've tried all of the different blends of coffee there's some k-cups uh there's regular beans of uh, uh you know that you can get in bags and jeremy is being a doll and handing my coffee to me right now some of the best the best uh coffee on the market let alone it, it, it is the best golf themed coffee so go check it out it's a great way to start your day off in a full swing you can go to mahlerbros.com that is m-a-h-l-e-r-b-r-o-s.com And for listening to this podcast and for listening to us and supporting us over here, we're going to give you an exclusive deal for 15% off by using code RISING2. So that's MahlerBros.com and use code RISING2, R-I-S-I-N-G-T-O. You can get yourself 15% off over there at MahlerBros.com site-wide. So go check it out today. But guys, we've got a lot to get to because we weren't able to recap a little bit of college football. Uh, let me go ahead and bring in my co-hosts. Of course, Jeremy's here in the studio with me, uh, looking alive and looking well. How you doing, Jeremy? I'm doing really well. I am thankfully survived after this last weekend up in Mitchell. <laughs> then we got a lot to talk about. It's it's going to be a stacked lineup. We got obviously leaving looking at the two minute drill. We got the arrest that happened over the weekend which really surprised me with the university of nebraska then i'm not going to get too far into detail so you guys just gotta stay ahead and watch the whole thing and we gotta kick it yeah yeah and then we got the man from mobile alabama blake how you doing brother i'm hanging in there fellas just uh chilling with the family and uh working hard and ready for some college football yeah, absolutely. I'm so excited that it's finally week one where we get the full slate back yes, on the schedule. Uh, it's going to be a lot of fun, and it's fun to be able to get into college football. But for everyone watching, make sure to tune in on Saturday morning at 8.30 a.m. Central Time. So that's 9.30 a.m. Eastern Time. You can tune in with us uh, and catch us live because we want you to join in the chat. We're going to have Blaine Crane on, hopefully, as long as everything works out to his schedule and everything, we should have him on live with us. Uh, for some college football previews. We're going to pick our top five games of the the weekend, and we're going to go over all five of those games. And we're like I said, we're going to have him there with us, but we, uh, Jeremy and I, we're going to be on the road. We're going to be at a live atmosphere up in Mitchell, South Dakota, right? Yes, sir. Uh, that's the town it's in, uh, yep. and it's Dakota Wesleyan University. So we're going to be there around the tailgaters there. It's going to be a lot of fun. Hopefully we get some people out. They even moved their game up uh, in a time slot because of the heat, too, so that's kind of a good good news for us maybe there's going to be more traffic and stuff like that so if you're in the area of mitchell south dakota make sure to stop over at the dakota uh, wesleyan university football field there where they play and uh, come check us out because we'll have a little hopefully tent Uh, i'm I'm still trying to see what the situation is on the tent Uh, hopefully have that to shield us from the sun but at the very least we'll have a table set up and have our live show over there for you guys to watch live and interact with us and stuff like that as well so check us out uh, saturday morning 8 30 a.m you'll see all of us as long as we all wake up, right, Blake? 
<laughs> I, I knew you were going to roast him for that. that. I saw you grinning yeah. big down there, and I had to give you a little bit, yeah. little bit of heat for it. But now it's all good, brother. You know, we we, we understand your your reasoning and everything. Um, Blake, I tried to help you. I was saying you stayed up too late, watch the Yankees pull off a dub, and then then you overslept. <laughs> No, nah, yeah, but okay. guys, let's let's get into it. We talked about college football, and Blake, I, I kind of knew where you were leaning because we talked a little bit about it. Plus, uh, you were able to throw in your predictions and stuff like that the night before uh, through your bets. So first off, I want to give us a little pat on the back, boys, because we predicted pretty well. I can't can't say that uh, we didn't do to that, that we didn't do well because uh, you know it's 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 tough being a small sports uh, podcast that we might get a little bit of flack for you know you're just a bunch of guys you don't really know what you're talking about. But uh, we, we we mentioned this last season. We don't throw BS out there, you know, and we, we we give pretty good predictions. And these were teams that aren't big teams that we were talking about. Jacksonville State, their first year in the FBS, there wasn't a whole lot that we could grab a hold of there you know navy and uh notre dame we're sitting out of two completely different teams this year than what we saw last year and yeah. there was a lot of these little little teams so i wanted to kind of give us give us a little shout out for for the good research and stuff that we were able to put together because i think we made really good predictions uh all week you know and really i think the only one was just maybe you know that that hawaii vandy game didn't go as lopsided as we thought but flip the script. but honestly i kind of i think that for one that's a little bit of the rain delays and stuff like that you're making them wait a little longer i think that plays into it um but overall i don't think it's it's too much to say i mean we still picked the winner of that game pretty easy too so uh just kind of looking around at all the games i don't think we made a bad prediction throughout the whole day uh, and so you know just a little bit of pat on the back to all three of us on on last saturday but let's talk about it real quick i want to first talk about notre dame and, and navy uh we see notre dame come out and 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 you know what notre dame i i put my my faith and my trust in you uh and you almost did your part for the most part i guess but you didn't let navy score one touchdown to help help me cover my 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 over uh and so that's the only thing that i i have that <laughs> That, that I can uh, talk bad about Notre Dame, but they looked really good, guys. I know they went against Navy. I know they were expected to win big, but Navy, in, you know, Navy's not an easy team to go in and just roll over like that. And so it was, it was impressive to see how they kept it all fundamental and they kept everything in front of them. We saw Sam Hartman get, uh, get under center and didn't fumble a single snap, which is really tough to do anytime, but he didn't fumble any snaps in the first year in this kind of a system under the under center. So that was really cool to see that he, he made really good reads. The defense, uh, you know, held their ground and they were able to keep Navy out of the end zone. And then on top of that, uh, you know, just just overall, they were penalty free for the most part. So, I mean, just watching Notre Dame, uh, I don't think you can expect too much more than what we saw out of them. But uh, Blake, I don't know how much you were able to catch of that game, but I mean, that that was a fun game to watch. And then it was also, you know, the, the atmosphere was awesome uh, for for the Fighting Irish to go over to Ireland. But Notre Dame, I I don't really have too much that I can say bad about them. I think they looked better than what I expected them to look like. I tell you what, fellas, uh, Notre Dame impressed me. I don't care if they were playing Navy, uh, whatever, who, whoever they were playing. I don't care. Okay, they went in there. Offensive line dominated. Uh, defensive line played really well. Receivers played really well. Sam Hartman is a dog. We all knew that coming in. But to see him uh, in this system, the play calling for Notre Dame looked ten times better. Uh, it just – the, the cohesiveness of of the offense look better without Tommy Reese there, right? And he's down at Alabama now. Uh, I, man, they ran the ball exceptionally well. Their defense was popping. You know, we all we all look at the triple option, and, and Navy gives people problems, right? Because in the triple option, if you don't do your job, all right, and you try to do somebody else's assignment, the triple option is going to spring for a big play, right? All right, so that end, he's got to he's got to take his guy, and if he doesn't, all right, the thing can spring for a big play. And I thought uh, the D line for Notre Dame, I thought they did really well, staying on their assignments, playing their guy, not trying to make up for somebody else's uh, assignment. And uh, man, they played one heck of a game. And I, I tell you, fellas, uh, I think Notre Dame's a problem. 
Yeah. I do. Like, yeah, I, mean, I think I know their I know their schedule is a little tough, but yeah. USC at Notre Dame, Ohio like State it. at Notre Dame, tough. I'm telling well, and, you, and, fellas, and we're going to touch you. on USC here in a moment. I do I do want to ask you guys about that too. But talking about this Notre Dame, I, I agree with you, Blake, because you you didn't really expect them to really show too much out there against Navy. You don't really have a whole lot, but the fact that you've got new pieces, you're uh, and, and then seeing the way that that Sam Hartman it kind of just meshed right with the, the squad that easy. That was really amazing to see. I think he showed up really big in a, in a big moment and he, he didn't look like there was any kind of rust or jitters, you know, like I thought for sure, you know, like this is opening day of college football. I think every player's nervous. And on top of that, you're with a new, new team, new system and all this. And so I, I thought he held his composure extremely well yeah. and he looked better than I thought he, he would have. And like you said, I think uh, uh, their offensive coordinator, Gerard Parker, I think he did a phenomenal job mixing it up and just keeping everything in front of them rather than than trying to you know play any kind of bully ball or anything like that. They didn't really try to run up the score, but they didn't do like what they did last year, like what we were talking about on Saturday. They didn't they didn't just let off the gas. They still kept it rolling, still wasted the, the clock at a, at a good pace. And, and I mean, Jeremy, they, they pulled out the win in, in a, a, an extremely uh, you know, good fashion overall. Oh, yeah, absolutely. I got a chance to watch this game when I was heading up to Mitchell last week. And then when I first pulled it up, it was, I think, 21 to nothing. I'm like, okay, Notre Dame starting to really roll here. And then I flipped it off for a little while. And then I flipped back and it was like 42 to, I think, what was the final? 42, 42 to 7? 42 to 3. 42 to 3. I looked, I'm like, wow, Notre Dame, where the heck did you come from? Like, I know, I don't know if it's just because they were in Ireland, the luck of the Irish. I don't know if that plays a factor to it, but, I mean, you can never know. Notre Dame looked unreal for their home, I shouldn't say home opener, but season opener, I should say. <laughs> it was basically, basically back in their homeland, <laughs> right? Pretty much. Yeah. <laughs> but, I mean, literally, Notre Dame looked strong right from the get-go. First snap, they just looked absolutely dominant can, that, can i say too because you said home and i'm thinking home jerseys and all this yeah. home uniforms can we say can we just say in notre dame i want you guys to keep those helmets with the, dude, the little irish on the front that, that was, was that dope, was pretty sweet dude. i like the way those look those look those look clean Their and that's are so dope they, they are dude. and and you know what and and marcus Free, freeman being there and th- just yeah. the the culture that seems to be there right now they're they're one of those teams that man I've hated them for such a long time and I brought that up, uh, you know, several different times and and the main thing is just join a conference that's it, um, but outside of them not joining a conference, I'm really starting to like Notre Dame right now. I like Marcus Freeman a lot. I think yeah. he the way he handles interviews and all that kind of stuff. So I, I love listening to the, the guy uh, talk and everything. But yeah, I mean Notre Dame they they looked phenomenal i think they looked much better i mean we can't overreact too much because it was just navy but they did what they were supposed to do uh and i also said the same thing about oklahoma last year Uh, on their first three games they looked phenomenal defense looked like they were clicking and then they fell apart so notre dame has to keep it together they're going to go against uh, ohio state in two weeks right yep so they're going to have to it's going to be at home uh, which that's the big thing too. The bi- two biggest games for them, Ohio State and USC, both at home. So that's really good news for the Irish this year. I don't want to throw them into college football playoff talk yet because I don't think they can make it there unless they win out. Uh, you know, and and they can have one loss on the season, but it needs to be a really close and a really good loss. Yeah. Um, but go ahead and win against Ohio State, and we'll start to talk about you being a, a college football playoff contender. Um, because I don't know, I think they just looked very sound and very put well put together. Josh, are we talking about home as in Ireland or home in South Bend? Both. Okay. Yeah. That makes more sense. Blake. Uh, I'm gonna throw out an early one. I think they beat Ohio State. I think so. Too. I sincerely think they do. Yeah, I mean, we'll we'll, we'll definitely get there. But I'm yeah. the, the way that I'm the way that I'm looking at them. I mean, we haven't seen Ohio State yet, so maybe there's something there to the puzzle that we're not seeing. But man, I'm just. I don't know. I'm looking around at Ohio State, and the more that I look at them, I'm seeing more like a nine-win season. I think, in my opinion, maybe ten. I, I think they can beat Ohio State, and I think they can beat USC if their defense I, stays yeah. the way that they are. Well, let's jump over and talk about USC real quick because, you know, what one thing that I was expecting to see from USC is We're that buzzing. we would let's we go. would we would hear and a lot of overhype about USC's defense because they went against San Jose State. That's what I imagined. But what did they let up? 23, 28 points. Yeah. 28. So, yeah. I, I mean, against San Jose State, come on. I, I know you're small dudes and you're just fast, fast defense. That's the way Alex Grinch likes to play defense. But 
I mean, we talked about how they brought in a bunch of dudes from the transfer portal that were supposed to help out this defense. What happened? And you still look like that against San Jose State. I think the defense looked like garbage. They didn't hold their assignments. They let dudes pass them. They they didn't look like a power five, you know, a USC, a college football playoff contender. The the, the dudes that we're expecting to win, win the, the Pac-12 in the last year, I didn't see that out of USC. I think Caleb Williams looked phenomenal, like we, we expected, against San Jose State. But he did have some playmaking that just showed how special and talented he is. And I think that offense, they had that freshman dude that, that ran it back. You know, they had a lot of a lot of good things looking on the offense and special teams. But defense, that's where, where they stand. Honestly, right now, the way I'm seeing that at, at that defense, I see them losing to Notre Dame. I see them, you know, like I know you brought up Oregon. You kind of called that one already. I don't, I don't know. Because Dan Lanning, I think, is going to have that Oregon defense put together a little better. Uh, and I, I think that offense is going to be dangerous this year at, up at Oregon, too. So I, I just, right now, what I saw from USC, that kind of makes me pull back on the reins from any kind of big-time talk until I can see you step up on defense and do something, which was always a question. But, guys, I mean, I, I'll start off with you, Blake, because I, I just, I, I didn't have a whole lot of expectations out of their defense, but I definitely backed off of whatever little little expectations I did have. Well, let's let's talk about their offensive line and how bad they are. True. Yeah, I mean, oh. I, yeah, absolutely. <laughs> you don't really need an offensive line when you get that many dudes running around. But talk about that. When, when when you talk about them going against an Oregon or even a Washington, uh, you know, Utah, I don't see it happening. Notre Dame. Yeah, right? Notre Dame. Uh, Notre Dame's going to bully that offensive line around. We know they have the skill, guys. We know they got the quarterback, right? Um, but once again, man, Alex Grinch is not the answer. Like, I don't know what it's going to take for Lincoln Riley to to come to this decision to move on. And, buddy, you're going to have to play defense in the college football playoff. This thing is expanding to 12, and you're going to have an even tougher road to get to a national championship. And you still just think that you can hang 60 on people and not play a lick of defense. Well, that's not going to happen. You know, San Jose State moved the ball up and down the field on them, uh, especially in the first half, San Jose State. Uh, let's go to the first quarter. San Jose State only let USC get one possession in the first quarter because on their one scoring drive, uh, they, they chewed up like seven minutes and 40 seconds on, on a touchdown drive. So, uh, yeah. Man, this defense, they can't tackle in the open space uh, still, even though they brought in all of these you know, transfer portal guys and uh, they, they were supposed to be a little bit more athletic on the back end. Like They still can't cover great. Uh, they really don't get a whole lot of pressure on the quarterback. Uh, it's just – it's bad, man. Like I, I just – I don't think Lincoln is that guy. And, and I'm on here to say that because – how much do you keep uh, – I mean, it's it's just repetition. Like, how much do you keep having to watch this to eventually come to the conclusion and say, you know what, he's just not it. He's not it. And when you face an Oregon, I'll be at that game, uh, I think you're going to get routed. Like, I just – I don't think uh, USC – uh, and their defense is going to hold up. And, and when we did the Pac-12 preview, I said, don't be shocked – that USC loses three games, and and I'm I'm telling you, I know everybody's putting them in the college football playoff, man. But that defense has to get extremely better. Uh, and if they do make it into the college football playoff, boy, they're gonna get blasted, blasted. And uh, Caleb Williams can put up Heisman numbers all he wants to, fellas. But I'm telling you right now, that defense is pathetic. Yeah, yeah, totally agreed. Jeremy? Blake, you said the best. The The offense you can do only so much with Caleb Williams, that's your offense. I mean, <laughs> literally, the offensive lineman, I, it literally felt like I was watching a dumpster fire. That was horrendous. Like, missing simple blocks, letting people roll by you, and even just the communication factor, that was just horrible. Like, it like I said, Caleb Williams is running around like a chicken with his head cut off. I mean, I know people have mentioned him to Patrick Mahomes, but, I mean, the the really big aspect now, I can see why he's he's running a lot. Just say I'm obviously seeing with Patrick Mahomes always scrambling every once in a while, but I think Williams might beat Patrick Mahomes in scrambling positions. I don't necessarily know, but, I mean, it's possible. But, like, they're 
like you mentioned, Blake, you, their defense, we can all we can all write a book about USC's defense is how how horrendous it is. But I mean, you you can only bark so much. But literally, their defense. If you don't sincerely step up, you're you might as well just go ahead and have your happy little butt just sit in a chair, just watching the postseason go right by you. Like mm-hmm. I don't know what else can be said or done for your defense if you get a whole brand new defense or or do different formations or do different setups, whatever the case be. You guys have seriously got to do something to help. They yeah, can't I mean, tackle. Well, oh, yeah, God, they, no. they can't tackle. I mean, overall, I mean, they, they let the, the dude, uh, the quarterback, look throw three touchdowns uh, to the same wide receiver. Uh, the, Nick Nash was the wide receiver's name. He, he caught the ball for 89 yards. He is a dog. And three, yeah, he yeah, is. he's a dog. I mean, I, I don't know if I can he, say that, though, because look who he was going against. <laughs> <laughs> but No, they, they did it to us last year. Uh, San Jose State, they got some dudes, man. Like, they almost beat us last year. So, really, they, they, they are, yeah, they did. They, uh, we had to come from behind, uh, to beat San Jose State at, at home last year. Wow. Yeah, so, I mean, I just, I'm, I mean, I'm, what not, they did. I'm not saying they're great. Yeah, I mean, they, but, they, they, yeah. I mean, USC, their defense led up almost 400 yards total offense. Good Lord. Uh, they had a 100 yard rusher on the day and then, you know, 198 yards and three touchdowns through the air. I mean, they just couldn't stop anything. What are you doing? And that was the one thing that I thought maybe they can improve on is stop letting dudes fly behind the safety. It, it, they can't even do that. No. Uh, so, I mean, yeah, I, I totally agree. I mean, Alex Grinch is not the guy. I don't know why Lincoln brought him over. That was kind of his escape. You know, like, he, he doesn't have to bring him over. So he could be like, ah, oh, man, you know, USC really wants me to hire this other dude, so I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go with him instead. Sorry. See you later. But that, that could have been your, your goodbye. Say your piece, you know, head out. Biggest mistake um, you ever But, made. yeah, I mean, that that was – I thought it was really pathetic. I expected more against San Jose State. So, I mean, just seeing that, again, it's first game of the season. Maybe there's more to the defense that we didn't see. Pray maybe the, maybe there's they're going to pull, a, you know, a, a trick out of the hat. I don't see it happening. Uh, so that was really disappointing. But, guys, that, that was – the college football that we saw last weekend, of course, we could talk about Hawaii and, and uh, Vandy if we really wanted to. I didn't really see a whole lot in that game to really talk about. Uh, nothing nothing really on, on the national level to really bring up t- uh, too much in that game, uh, other than the fact that at least we didn't see anybody get struck by lightning. So that was a good thing. Um, but let's talk about some college football that's going to be happening tomorrow night. It'll be tonight for those who are, who are watching this as it's going on right now. But Thursday night games coming up. Uh, there's three games that I really want to highlight because first off, uh, Kent State versus UCF. I think this will be a fun little game. UCF in their first year in the Big 12. Uh, I really want to see UCF get off to a hot start. And last I saw, I think they're like a 35, 36 point favorite in this really? game. So, I mean, uh, Kent State, uh, their last season, they had a 5-7 and seven record. It wasn't a good record. I think the year before is whenever they really surprised people. Uh, and, and just how, how kind of dangerous they were at getting really close to big teams. I know they got really close to Oklahoma. Uh, you know, just looking at Kent State overall, I don't think Kent State is, is a team that you just write off to say that they're going to get killed, uh, especially by UCF. But uh, with, with uh, what's the quarterback's name, John Plumley? Yeah, him him coming in and to UCF and, and seeing him roll. I'm, I'm, I'm excited to see what the Golden Knights are able to, to put together. Um, but uh, I, I, did I say they're not the Golden Knights? They're just the Knights, right? I was I'm thinking say of Vegas. Thinking of hockey. I'm, I'm thinking of Vegas. But yeah, you know, seeing seeing what they do have a Golden Knight as the mascot, though. But uh, seeing what UCF is able to put together against Kent State, I think this is a good a good opening game for for. Picking a small team, I think Kent State's a good little small team to go against because they're they're going to have that kind of. Um, I, I know I know in uh, previous years you've seen them run more of like an RPO style offense and uh, just kind of like a lot of these little rollouts and stuff like that that keep your defense rolling. And so you're going to have to stop you know a tough dude in the backfield. Uh, it, it's 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 going to be. A, a game that really gets you seasoned and ready to go for these bigger teams. Uh, and so overall, I'm, I'm liking this this matchup uh, and, and looking through. Last year, UCF had a nine-win season. Uh, who knows what they're able to put together this year in their first year in the Big 12. But, I mean, looking at this this Kent State-UCF matchup, Jeremy, what are we looking at here? I think you can really honestly see a really close game here. Or or even I think you could pull off an upset with this for – for UCF, I know obviously, like you said, they're thirty-five over for being the favorite. Yeah, uh, yeah, I think right now I'm seeing thirty-six and a half 36 on here. Thirty-six and a half. Okay, that's really like it's not like a one or two odd favorite, but I mean that's a big number for these guys. Obviously, being the first year here, uh, that's 
that's really obviously positive for those guys being the first year into this new division and getting that fresh start out of the get-go. Like, I sincerely think that they can come out. Like, I don't expect them to roll over these guys, but, I mean, I definitely think they're not going to go down obviously without a fight. You look at some of these guys, some of these wideouts and some of these linemen that they have, they're dogs, and they can definitely they can definitely bite. They're one of those pesky teams, too, yeah. I think Kent State is. It's, it's not that they're a good team, that they're going to put a, put together this big talent or anything like that, but they're just a pesky team that, yeah. that keeps on keeps on making you work for those wins. Absolutely. Like, they'll make your defense and they'll make your offense work for it. I mean, I know, obviously, there are, I don't know necessarily know how their defensive standpoint looks for this upcoming season, but, I mean, they're definitely a team not to sleep on just because, literally, like you mentioned, they put up a nine-win nine season last year, and I know – it's it's one thing to put up a nine se- nine win season last year, but if you guys can transfer that going over into this new beginning, that's huge confidence for you guys. And I I sincerely think they can pull off the upset here, in my opinion. Yeah, so they they bring in uh, Michael Alemo uh, from Purdue. That's their quarterback that they've got okay. this year. I, I knew I recognized who their quarterback was, but uh, so they've they've got a transfer. Kent State does, uh, so they they had him transfer in, uh, and then. You know, just looking at Kent State, like I said, Blake, I think Kent State's just a pesky team. Do you think UCF's going to be able to cover that 35, 36 point spread? Man, I want to say yes, but man, I know Gus, <laughs> Gus is, <laughs> uh, he's so unpredictable, right? Brings back some memories, uh, huh? Yeah, he's, he's truly unpredictable. Like, I mean, hmm, I want to say they do. But I'm not sure how much like John Rice Plumley plays. Uh, I think his athleticism uh, in the run game uh, and throwing the football, uh, I, I think he puts up enough points uh, to win this game in a blowout fashion. Uh, I think UCF's defense is good enough uh, to stop whatever Kent State throws at them. Um, but, man, it's a lot of points. Uh, and it's on a Thursday night. UCF's kind of – they're kind of used to playing on a Thursday night. Yeah, though. They yeah, play on yeah. Thursdays and Fridays all the time, so uh, they got to get in that TV time, right? So uh, it's at the bounce house. Man, let's go with UCF covering, man. I, you want to take I, I think covering, they, all right. Yeah, I think they can. I, 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 I put, I put some up. decent money on them not on Kent State covering just because I think Kent State's going to be pesky enough to make it – Maybe a fifteen to twenty point game. I don't think they're going to get too close. I don't think it's going to be like a down to the wire kind of game. But I think they'll cover within within fifteen points. That's kind of my my prediction. Just because I've seen Kent State, uh, you know, upset or get really close to upset, and like I think a few years ago they were really close to upset in Georgia, like two years yeah. ago on a, a phenomenal Georgia team who won the national championship. So you know, looking at Kent State, that's just the kind of team that they are. So I don't think they're going to go down without a fight. Uh, you know, I think it's going to be similar to what we saw with that Vandy Hawaii game because I. I think Vandy could have ran away with that game, um, but Hawaii was just sticking around and, and didn't want to go away. Uh, so, I mean, that, that's kind of what I'm seeing. I don't think it's going to be that close, but, you know, like I said, maybe like a 15 to 20 points. Uh, you know, I, I definitely smashed Kent State being able to cover that just because I think they're going to be pesky enough. You, you make a great point, too, and like I said, man, I don't know how long UCF starters are going to play in this game. True. And I think I think Kent State could kind of – uh, they could co- kind of come in on that back end in that fourth quarter and and hit a little backside cover uh, right there. So yeah, it's a tricky line, man. I, I think UFC uh, UCF wins in big fashion, uh, but yeah, that that does that line scares me. Yeah, yeah. Did did you already throw some? Yeah, you, we already you already, we already talked about that, right? Yeah. All right, sweet. Just want to make sure I covered it. I don't know. My my brain's kind of all over the place right now. <laughs> I've been getting a lot of things set up and ready to go. So, um, but let's jump over to Florida uh, against Utah. This is a fun matchup. Obviously, we got uh, Florida, who you know ended up pulling out the win at home, uh, just barely there by by a last minute uh, interception. Uh, and so seeing that one last year, I think that was that was a really fun game to watch. And I think Florida did a really good job in sticking around. I think you know it was it was weird to see Florida and how tough they looked in that game, and they just didn't look tough the rest of the year, losing to Vanderbilt, uh, all kinds of stuff. But ultimately, I still think this is a, a fun game to look at. Right now, it looks like the spread's right around four and a half, uh, pretty much all over the board. Uh, you know, and Utah is is favored in this game. 
It's going to be at Utah, uh, and I think this is going to be a game that you're not going to see the same competitive nature that you saw last year. I think uh, it, it is going to be a little a little tough, and it's it's hard for me to to pick. I I do I don't know what it's sitting at. Let me see if I can. Uh, it looks like 44 and a half to 45 is kind of what your your total is looking at right now for the predictions. I, I'm, I'm really leaning towards trying to take the under on this game just because I don't know if Cam Rising is going to be in. If he's not, I see a lot of running. He's out. He got is, he, is he is, is he, he ruled, ruled out? out? Yeah. Yeah. They said that they they uh, they doubt that he plays tomorrow night. Well, let me hurry up and go in here real quick and put that under. No, no I'm just kidding. But no, I, I, I do think I do think you know if if I had to give my predictions and if you wanted to take my advice on a bet to throw in right now, I'm thinking that under is kind of smelling pretty good right now, just because I see a lot of running. Again, I want to keep on reminding everybody throughout the season as we're putting in any kind of bets to remember that that clock keeps on running now that clock changes is going to look more like the the nfl rules now so that's kind of something that's the main reason why i think that notre dame navy game uh hit the under because we were talking about that too i wanted to hit the under but i went ahead and just took that over because i was like "Ah, i think navy can score a couple of times but you know so just remember that with with these running teams and i think utah is going to utilize the run game a lot uh, in, in this game without Cam Rising. Be, just be smart. I think you have the better talent. I think you have the better team. Don't try to throw the ball. Don't try to tr- don't try to do anything special. Just go out there and win the game. And I think that's all you really have to do if you're Utah. Uh, and I think that home field advantage is going to be a lot. Uh, they, they went you know, with a 10-win season last year. They were looking really good. There was just little things uh, that ACL... A tour for Cam Rising. Uh, he's just he's injury prone. He's a he, he he's got a lot of talent, but he's just injury prone, and I hate to see that for him. But uh, overall, like I said, I kind of like I kind of like uh, I, I like for one, I like the the under, and the other thing too, I think that that uh, Utah is able to cover that spread as well. I think they're able to come out come out of here maybe with a double digit win. So I'm I'm really liking Florida in this game, Jeremy. Florida. Or sorry, I said Utah. I, I think I said Florida, but I meant yeah, Utah. I like I, Utah a lot. In this I was game. gonna say I was kind of confused for a second, but Utah. <laughs> I'm is, gonna cover you. I'm gonna take Utah to cover, but I like Florida. No, okay, that's just sense. a flip of the script. <laughs> I know you. I know your mind's going a million directions, but dang, you're really confusing the heck out of me, man. But Utah, they they can definitely pull off pull off anything. I know, obviously, without having Cam Rising at the starting helm, it's it's gonna be tricky. Obviously, you're gonna see a lot of the running. If you're going to be under pressure, I know a lot of quarterbacks don't like to do it, but throw it away. Don't make that cost of the mistake. Just throw it wherever, and all of a sudden, you know, it's getting intercepted. Then they run it back for six. I know quarterbacks don't like to throw it away, but, I mean, look at the pros. You have to do it. You have to do it. I mean, I, I know a lot of people are wondering, like, why the heck are you throwing it away? Why are you doing that? But, I mean, literally, I'd rather have a quarterback throw it away than – make a cost of mistake that could potentially possibly cost them the game. Like looking out on the other side of it, obviously their offense is offense is really strong. Obviously coming up from last year having a really dominant season, uh, having ten wins, was it correct, Josh? Yeah, ten wins and last year. I know even on their defense, their defense could use a tiny bit more work, but they're obviously their defensive is still the same way. They're strong. They have some big they have some big dogs in there and they ain't gonna afraid to push them around. Then overall I think I would stick with over, uh, let me start that over again. Utah will definitely get the win on this, in my opinion. But I think that it'll still be close, but not to the point to where it's going to be a one point game. Yeah, I like it, uh, Blake. Man, I was I was super on Utah. I was super sold on Utah until the news come out that Cam Rising uh, will potentially sit this game tomorrow night or tonight if you're watching this. Uh, <sighs> Man, Utah is going to have to run the football, and I'm just not sure if they can run on this Florida defense. I know a lot of people aren't high on Florida this year. Uh, I know Florida is on the road in this game. It's on a Thursday night. But Graham Mertz is going to be the more experienced uh, quarterback in this game. He's had a lot of big-time games under his belt uh, coming from the University of Wisconsin. I know a lot of people, they don't think he's the most talented guy, and he might not be. But uh, Florida will now have the upper hand at the quarterback position, in my opinion, in this game. And uh, I'm I'm just curious to see. I know Utah's got dogs in the backfield. Uh, But I'm curious to see how Utah plays this, man. And and 
I'm just not sure if Utah can run the football uh, effectively against Florida's front seven. And man, 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 man. I'm not going to bet on this game. <laughs> I think Utah. I think Utah wins this game because they're at home. I think it is extremely close. I think the defense think wins it for them. I think it's low scoring. Um, man, it's going to be a hell of a game. I can tell you that. It's going to be a hell of a game. It's going to be hard hitting. Uh, both of these cats, uh, I think his name's Cole Bishop for uh, Utah. He's a cat from Georgia. Uh, they got him out there uh, in Utah. And I think he's number, number eight. Or number six, uh, he plays safety for Utah. Uh, watch him, highlight him, man. He's fun to watch. He he's a dude. He flies around with the football. Uh, big time, big time thumper back there for Utah. So uh, there's a lot of talent in this game. I'm I'm curious to see uh, how Utah stops this Florida running game because Florida's uh, their backfield is dominant. Uh, they they got some horses back there. So uh, I think this is going to be a, a grimy, dirty. Uh, football game, I, I think it's going to be very low scoring, uh, and that's crazy to say because last year it was it got into a little shootout and Cam Rising yeah. the pick at the goal line to lose the yeah. game. So, uh, yeah, man, this is a tough one. I give me Utah just because they're at home on a Thursday night. What would you take for a score, Blake? If you had to throw one out, um, give me give me twenty three twenty Utah. Okay. Yeah. So still, still barely hitting that under on that one then. What would you say, Josh? So yeah, I'm right around there. I think maybe 21 to, man, I don't know, 21 to 12, maybe somewhere 12, around there. 12, yeah, I'm, okay. I'm thinking, I'm thinking Utah comes out ahead. I think they keep on. Like I said, it's gonna be a lot of running on both sides of the ball, really, just because that's that's just how Florida is built. Uh, and then uh, Bryson Barnes is the quarterback for for Utah st- stepping in. I had to look that up to to see who would be stepping in for him and. Overall, I'm, I'm not impressed by his numbers, but I think he's going to be good enough to kind of fill in that role. And like I said, especially the role of handing the ball off and just keeping the ball safe. Yeah. Uh, and, and I think that's I think it's going to turn out all right for Utah. Uh, I'm I'm not as uncertain for them just because I'm not I, I'm not very high on Florida. I think Florida's going to have a really bad year this year. Uh, I think this is going to be the the last year for Billy Napier. Uh, I just I don't know. I I don't see how he makes it out alive this season. Uh, and and. I, I, I don't see a whole lot of a whole lot of opportunities for them to really come away with big wins to really save his job over there either. But let's let's jump over to the the uh, other game for, that's going to be going on and another big game I guess really just to look at it just because it's Matt Rule's first year with Nebraska uh, and his his first time stepping in the first time going to be stepping on the field as a Nebraska head coach and so I I want to see what you guys are thinking on this game because this is one that is really hard for me to predict. Uh, I, I think Nebraska is going to cover the spread. I think the last I saw, they were seven and a half point underdogs. So I'm going to pick. If I have to pick, make a pick here, I'm picking Nebraska to cover the spread um, because I think this is going to be a close game, and I think you're going to see a, a Nebraska team that's that's well versed on defense. I think they're going to come out with a with a with a, a better defense than you've seen in recent years, especially with Scott Frost under helm, who's focused more on the offense and didn't even do good over there. Um, but I think this is going to be a better Nebraska team. I have a hard time picking them to win the game, but I think they can cover the, that seven and a half point spread. I think they keep it close. Um, Minnesota, on the other hand, you know they don't have the Ibrahim kid that, that was running all over, um, but uh, I'm pretty sure they still have what's their their quarterback's name Tanner. Uh, I don't know why I can't think of his name now. I'm drawing a blank. Uh, it's too. it's it, it's on the tip of my tongue too, but uh, I, I believe they still have him at quarterback. If I'm if I'm not mistaken, uh, I feel like he's been in. The, if he, he is still there, I feel like he's been in uh, college football for twelve years. But you know, uh, their, so their, their starter is Ethan Calicamanis. Okay, so they do have a different starter uh, for yep. that's for run for a quarterback. Yep. Yeah. Okay. And yeah, so they do have a different starter starter at, at quarterback because I can't uh, Tanner Morgan. Tanner, yeah, yeah that's that's who it. I'm thinking of. I don't know why I just I, I couldn't think of, of what his last name was, but Tanner Morgan. I felt like he was there forever. Yeah. Um, but yes, yeah, so, so they finally have a new quarterback. I, I don't know. I mean, I don't have a whole lot of faith in PJ Fleck. I think he was a really good coach at whatever that that little um, like a Western Michigan school, whatever it was, like Whitewater, something like that. Um, but he was really good over there and. and I, I had maybe higher expectations for him coming in. I don't really like him as a head coach. I think he's going to have your bowl game 
uh, kind of seasons, and that's about it. So that's why I feel like I could look at Nebraska and I could say that they're they're going to come out and win this, but I don't know too much. And it, we'll get to it here in a minute. But they lost their the, a tight end that I kind of had high expectations for. Uh, and the big big question for me is whether Jeff Sims is going to live up to this these expectations because he was one of them that I really wanted to slip him in there for our players to watch out for because I think he's a, a player that if he plays well, I think he can he can really make that offense click. And Matt Rule obviously sees something in Jeff Sims that I don't see. When I see him back at Georgia Tech, I didn't see anything special out of him. I thought he was a mediocre at best quarterback. And I just I don't see anything out of him. I think they downgraded in the quarterback position. I liked Casey Thompson there at Nebraska. Uh, I know, Blake, I know you didn't really care for him too much, but I think he improved a lot coming over from Texas and going to Nebraska. I think he looked much better and made that offense look better, even though the offensive line was garbage last year uh, and, and really the last several years under Scott Frost. Uh, and, and so I, I don't think I would blame any of the the bad things that, that Casey Thompson did on him most of the time, because a lot of the times it was just scramble around and try to get the ball out of there as quick as possible without losing yards or turning the ball over. Uh, and, and then, of course, they don't have Trey Palmer. They don't have a lot of those key pieces that they had last year. This is a totally new team uh, for Nebraska. I, 100% totally different, different schemes, different coach. Everything's going to feel different about Nebraska. So I don't really know where to, to lean, other than the fact that I have enough faith in Matt Rule and some of the coaches that he's brought in to have that defense looking good enough to be able to cover that seven and a half point spread as it stands right now. But Blake, where are you feeling for the Cornhuskers going against the Minnesota Golden Gophers? I'm staying far away from this game, not laying a single <laughs> penny on it. I don't think I can either. Uh, if I was to bet this game, I would bet Nebraska to cover but lose the game like you said. Um, man, I'm just not so sure on Minnesota this year. I know they went 9-3 and three last year. They ran the ball uh, right down people's throats and everything. Uh, but there's a new look over there. Uh, I do think P.J. Flex a, a good coach. I, I think uh, him doing what he's done at Minnesota uh, he is a hell of a job, right? I mean, to win there, win nine games a year at Minnesota, man, that's incredible. Yeah, um, it's just a tough place to recruit, you know? Like, I, I just don't know many college kids that want to hey, come go up here and, and freeze your balls off in the yeah. winter for me and come play right? football yeah. while, while freezing your balls off. I mean, just, yeah, yeah. no, no, thank no you. No, thanks. It, it's a tough place to recruit, right? So um, I'm excited about the Matt Rule era, though, man. Like, I am, too. I, Me three. I know they lost Casey Thompson, and I'm not high on Casey Thompson. I don't think he was great. I, I think he threw the ball to the other team way too much. Uh, I, I would and, I would disagree with that. I don't. I, there was a lot of his interceptions where I didn't see. It was it was a, a you know something where most of his interceptions were off off of receivers' hands, or. Yeah getting hit because he's getting hit way too quick in the pocket uh and and that that's where i saw i mean i know i I watch a lot you know my my family's nebraska fan so i I watch a lot i was really impressed with casey thompson last year i think there had to have been something more behind the scenes maybe his injury was bugging him more than what we really uh, you know are 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 looking at from the outside maybe there was there was some uh you know, maybe some issues in, with with him and the coaches too. I don't know, but he went down to FAU. I think he's going to be an all right fit down there. I don't think he's going to move anywhere from there. Uh, good luck in the future. But I, I did like him a lot better at Nebraska than I did at, at Texas. I thought he was terrible at Texas. I thought it was a horrible pickup for Nebraska. But he fit that that Mark, uh, you know, or not Mark. Uh, what's uh, Whipple? Uh, yeah. Is it is it Mark yeah. Whipple? Yeah, Mark Whipple. Okay, yeah. yeah, yeah, he fit that Whipple offense really well, and I thought I thought he did really well with it. I um, but I I'm, I'm, I'm really low on Jeff Sims though. <laughs> Are you? It really I, low. I, think, I don't I don't I see think, any potential out of him. I think he is. Uh, I think he's a playmaker, man, and I just think what he was in at, at Georgia Tech was uh, it was trash. Well, so so. And, one thing that you have to look at too, I, I do agree with you. I think he was in a bad position, so maybe I'm giving, yeah. I'm, I'm putting too much, uh, you know, Negativity. from from his past on him. But they don't want him to run. That was something that Matt Rule made very clear. He does not want him to run. He doesn't want him to improvise. Maybe he's going to run around in the backfield and be able to create something. But I feel like if you're gonna if you're gonna bring Jeff Sims in, I'm thinking you run some sort of 
some sort of RPO styled offense, but I don't think that's what Matt Rule's trying to run. Yeah, and I mean he's gonna have to he's gonna have to take off and run. He's too talented not to yeah, take I off agree. and run. Yeah, I um, agree. And that's the only thing that I th- think is an upside for him. Yeah, I, I just um, I'm interested to see this Nebraska defense. Um, I, I'm I'm interested to see who they have on the outside, uh, what kind of playmakers they have, what kind of uh, running game they have. I think that uh, Matt Rule was a great fit at Nebraska. I'm high on that uh, pickup for them. I think I've said multiple times. I think this fan base deserves to be good again. I don't I don't think they will ever be great again. All right. Like I don't think Nebraska will get back to what they were in the nineties. I don't. I just think uh time has overpassed them and uh I feel and- like with the money that they bring in, with the boosters that they have, I, I truly feel like there will be a time, maybe not as good as they were in the nineties, but I do think there will yeah. be a time where they're up there in the top again. Yeah. And maybe bounce back down and kind of uh, I don't really know know a team to kind of compare them to. Maybe, you know, maybe similar to what we've seen with Oklahoma here in, in, in recent years, where you 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 shine really really big, and then just yeah. kind of take a step back and just climb back into that talk again. That's that's where I see Nebraska personally, just because I think they have too much at that university. Yeah. the The reason I say that is because now you're bringing over USC, UCLA, true, true. Oregon, Washington. And I think it just gets that much thicker in the yeah. Big Ten. True. Um, I never liked the move from Nebraska to leave the Big Twelve. I never Agreed. liked that. I was yeah. I wasn't a fan of it. Uh, I just I thought that was a bad bad move for them. Um, but I'm excited about their football team this year. I think what Matt Rule has done talent wise. Uh, and and bringing guys in and and making a new face for Nebraska. That's a big deal to me because I just went through it with the team that I support in the Auburn Tigers, right? Uh, You have to – you've got to get the old out and bring in the new. And uh, that, that's that's how it goes, right? And and I think Matt Rule, what he did at Baylor to resurrect that program after everything they had been through, uh, he's he's known for that, and he's known for high flying offense. And uh, I think he's going to have this offense putting up points. I don't like them to win, but I like them to cover. I like this game to be really really close. Yeah, yeah, same. And uh, I, I I don't know. I mean, I, I agree with you too. I think Matt Rule was. A better fit the more I look at it I think he's going to be able to develop guys and and the, the him coming in finally feels like the right move because yeah. I don't think Mike Riley was the right move Scott Frost no. kind of seemed too good to be true and now this one was finally like hey I can look at his resume and actually see something that makes sense with Nebraska but Nebraska brand new team uh, I think that's what makes this this game is so hard to, to predict. But what are you what are you looking at in prediction for this Nebraska Minnesota game? What I'm looking for is all the guys that are from last year that didn't get a lot of playing time for like obviously on the wide receiver position, especially like as you mentioned, having Trey Palmer not there now. What's Nebraska gonna do? Like like looking at the roster, like what's like Marcus Washington gonna do? Isaiah Garcia gonna do? Like I know they had some. They had some stats like Marcus Washington. I know he had only one touchdown last year. Like he had a lot of yardage. He had thirty-one receptions and like I think it was like four hundred, like sixty, seventy yards or something like that. But like you look at, you look at their depth for what they got. You, it's definitely, it's definitely time for these guys who have seen a lot of the playing time definitely to step up and get your name out there. Even like Xavier Betts, like he's definitely, like. He's got a new beginning to himself just because I know um, that you really can't predict much for this game. I shouldn't say that, but you can predict only so much is what I should rather really say. Just with both of these teams, like you look at Nebraska, I see Matt Rule. This is definitely going to be a new beginning for Nebraska. Then, like, whenever I see the University of Minnesota going Gophers, the first thing that comes to my mind is hockey. But Minnesota, is they're definitely a team not to sleep on either. Obviously, you've seen them put up put up points on the board, but looking at this game for tomorrow, it's definitely going to be, uh, I think it's going to be a close game in my opinion. I think it might be, if I had to guess, it's going to be like a three-point game decided, decided by a field goal, but you, you really can't predict this kind of game. For all we know, Nebraska could either come out looking 
better than USC, or they can I would look like a complete dumpster fire like their defense for all we know. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I think looking at it too, the other thing is that it's not just Nebraska that looks so new. I think Minnesota's got a lot of new pieces that that are yeah, kind of adding true. to the puzzle too. So even though even though the, it's the, you know, maybe the same staff that's there for Minnesota, so maybe that's not as different. But there is a lot of a lot of things changing. Yeah. Uh, when, anytime you change a quarterback and running back, uh, it's going to look a lot different on your offense. But one thing that I think, uh, and I had to pull up their depth chart too to kind of look at at kind of where uh, Matt Rule moves some of these guys around to. One thing that I think he did really well at was retaining the talent that they had at Nebraska. I, I do think they had guys there, uh, and I think a lot of it was just c- the coaching because you saw that with how many times they were so close to, to, to either so close to winning or just so close and barely lost. Yeah. Uh, and, and you saw that so much under Scott Frost. So I don't think it was the talent there because I think they still had big, strong dudes, but I think it was a lot of, of the coaching. And one thing, I think the offensive line is going to be a heck of a lot better with that, that uh, strength and conditioning coach. If you haven't seen yeah. him, I'll, I'll have to send you you guys a picture of him. I uh, forget yeah. his name is Coleman. Coleman. Uh, yeah. Coach Coleman, whatever his, his first name is. Dude's but jacked. Dude is, is a monster. So, I mean, if he can get that offensive line looking anything like him. Like, w- one thing that, that that surprises me is that they don't have Anthony Grant up there uh, in 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 the 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 depth chart. He's he's looking like he's third on this depth chart right now, uh, which is really shocking to me because that dude was an animal last year, uh, and and I really had high expectations of out of him coming coming into this year. So I don't know if I feel like I did hear something. Maybe it was academics or something like that that was kind of keeping Matt Rule uh, Matt, Matt Rule kind of keeping him I back bet. on the depth chart, but. Guys, we're going to get into the two-minute warming, but before we do, uh, I want to stop and talk about something that we all need and we all recognize it, and it is energy. And the best way to get that energy is by going over to Built.com and checking out Built Bars because Built Bars gives you the right energy that helps you stay on top of your game. Built Bars aren't your normal protein bars that are going to have uh, anything bad in them or anything like that. They're nutritious and, uh, nutritious, nutritious and packed with all kinds of uh, you know good, good protein and, and good stuff in them. And the other thing about Built Bars that make them so much different than other protein bars is that they taste amazing. They really do. I think they've got some of the best taste uh, out of all protein uh, bars. And the, the thing on top of that is you don't have to sit here and think that they they don't have a flavor for you because they've got all kinds of enticing flavors. Uh, some of my favorites are salted caramel uh, or cookies and cream. Uh, they've all even it got a uh, coconut uh, that is pretty good. And I'm not I don't even really like coconut too much. Birthday uh, that's cake. birthday cake was mm. a pretty good one. The uh, brownie batter, all kinds of amazing flavors over there at Built Bar. Uh, and the, the amazing thing is they're coated in 100% real chocolate. So whether you're working out, maybe you go for a hike, uh, you're getting ready and tailgating for for college football whatever the case is you need to try out built bars and they're going to help you they're going to help you fuel up built bars are the perfect companion to keep you energized and satisfied without piling on all of these sugars and sketchy additives and for our loyal listeners we've created a a deal with built bar to where we can get you 10 percent off their amazing protein bars you can go check them out at built.com and use code RISING2, that's R-I-S-I-N-G-T-O, for 10% off over at Built.com. Go check them out. I really do think they are, are amazing uh, protein bars. That I think they, they taste amazing. They don't have that gritty texture that most protein bars give you. Uh, and like I said, whether, whether you're, you're an experienced Built Bar user and you use Built Bars a lot, maybe you want to try out a new flavor, or maybe you're brand new to them, go check them out and try it out for your first time. Again, that's Built.com and use code RISING2, R-I-S-I-N-G-T-O for 10% off. But Jeremy, time for us to get into the two-minute drill. And for those who don't know what this is, it's where we go over several topics and try to keep it under two minutes per topic. What's our first topic on the list for right. the two-minute drill? First one, Arizona State self-imposed bowl ban. Arizona State informed the NCAA and Pac-12 that they will self-impose a bowl ban for the 2023 season due to alleged violations of NCAA rules that occurred within the program <coughs> under ex-Suns Devil coach Herm Edwards. Now, I know this has been lingering around, obviously, like you mentioned, we didn't get to talk about it on Monday, but Blake, give me your perspective on all this situation that's going on with Arizona. Uh, you had to take the bowl ban to uh, just kind of like hopefully make a good impression on the NCAA. 
take the bowl ban, the self-imposed bowl ban for one year, and hopefully uh, the penalty isn't too harsh from the NCAA. Uh, hopefully they don't hit you with that big of a, uh, a penalty of scholarships and money and things like that uh, yeah. for you know what Herm Edwards and that previous staff uh, did there at Arizona State. You know, I, I saw Brian Harson make a tweet the other night that said, uh, "Simple and plain, just don't cheat." Uh, you know, it is what it is, man. You got to take the one year ban. Uh, Auburn had to do it uh, in basketball a couple years ago. They had really? to do a self-imposed, yeah. They had to do a self-imposed ban uh, to hopefully, you know, they they had a, a former coach on staff that got into some trouble, uh, and um, they took the they took the self-imposed NCAA tournament ban, and uh, the the infractions didn't come down as harsh as what some people thought. So, you know, I, I think it's a good thing for Arizona State. I think it's a good thing for uh, Kenny Dillingham in his first year there. Obviously, knowing that you're probably not going to be that great this year, you're probably not going to be where you want to be. So, might as well take it now. Hopefully, uh, the NCAA comes down a little soft on you, and uh, you can get your program to where you really want it to be in year two, three, and four. Yeah, absolutely, Josh. Yeah, another thing with this too is that taking this bull ban. Uh, kept them out of having to pay a lot of money, so that's that's kind of good for the the, the school as a whole. But the, the main thing I think David Cohen said it really well whenever he he brought this up is that it's ridiculous that Herm Edwards and the guys that really uh, were the ones that that imposed on these you know and and, and he, they were the ones that broke the rules, and I don't see them really getting punished. And that's the thing that sucks about this. I think it's the same with Tennessee. The guys that did the actions are gone. They tried to get ahead of it and fire him as soon as they found out. Uh, and, and now you're seeing the same thing with Arizona State. They got rid of the dude. Uh, you know, he, he broke the rules and they got rid of the dude. And now you're 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 punishing the, the players that that weren't a part of that. And if they do win seven or eight, you know, six, seven or eight games this season, which we all talked about, it's possible with how yeah. new that 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 uh, team is and how easy the schedule is for for Arizona State. It's possible for them. And it sucks that that those guys, especially seniors that aren't going to be here next year, won't be able to enjoy that because of the actions of someone else. So that that really sucks. Um, but like you said too, I think it's good for them just to get ahead of it and kind of kind of bypass some of these other these other uh, infractions that could come on them. Absolutely. So now going on to topic number two, a little close to our neck of the sticks a little bit. Eric Gilbert being arrested down in Lincoln, Nebraska. The 21 year old broke into SJ's Liquor and Vape Shop at 27th and O Street around 2 a.m. Tuesday. Obviously, there were surveillance videos from inside the shop and obviously throwing something at the door, then sliding underneath it, then kicking a door open into the shop. I mean, Josh, we've mentioned this time and time before with certain athletes that we've mentioned before. What the heck are you doing to your career? Yeah, I mean, uh, dude, you you've got talent. Like I said, I was I was looking forward to him on the field. I think he's got a lot of talent. Apparently, he had some some mental health issues, whatever the case is. I don't really buy that as an excuse. You knew that that was wrong, mm-hmm. and and he broke in. I think I saw he he uh, stole like over sixteen hundred dollars yeah. worth from from this yeah, get, this vape shop, uh, and then you know six hundred and fifty some dollars or something like that, and and damages. Uh, I mean, dude. Get your life together. What are you doing? You guys have a, a really good opportunity to start something big for this new era there at Nebraska. And, and you you could have been a big part of it, but you blew it. And not only that, but you were stupid and took too long, too. The cops were sitting outside waiting for you. Like, what's wrong with you? Uh, you know, and, and not, not to say that next time you should try to be quicker and get away from the cops, but just to say that don't do it in the first place. Like this was just, it was a bonehead move. You just ruined your career. You're probably never going to see the field again. Absolutely. And then Blake, what do you got to take on all this? <sighs> all right. Um, to do this by yourself, um, to do it at all is wrong, but for him to do this by himself, man, there's some screws loose. Yeah. hundred uh, percent. The kid needs help. Uh, yeah, definitely. And I think you have to step away from the football field, and uh, you have to seek serious attention for this kid. Uh, and and I saw some people saying that, you know, sometimes you just have to give up on a guy. But I don't think you give up 
on the human being. I think you give up on the football player. Okay. You like give that. up on the football player, but you don't give up on the human being. All right. He needs help. He's from SEC country down here. He he went to LSU. Then he went to Georgia. There was rumors that he was going to Florida, and and he he comes back to Georgia, and then he's out of Georgia to Nebraska, and all of this. So he's floated around multiple times, and he just hasn't found a home. And maybe maybe life just got to him, you know. And and uh, it's wrong. You know, it shouldn't it shouldn't happen. Uh, the the kid has a scholarship. If even if football doesn't work out, academics could go, and uh, and he could make a lot of money doing something that that he truly loves. But now, you're squandering that opportunity. And uh, I like what Matt Rule said though is is uh, he feels sorry for the business owner. He also feels sorry for the Gilbert family. And uh, it's it's best if they they seek serious attention and help for this kid to get him on the right track. And and that is what I mean when I say maybe you stop helping the football player in, in Eric Gilbert and you start helping the human being because you gotta have some balls. You gotta have some serious balls to break into somebody's shop like that, not knowing what is on the other side of that door. Okay. Who knows, man? Look, there's been cases here down here in Mobile where we had a business owner. He lived at his business. Okay. Somebody broke into his business and he come out into the business and shot them. Okay. So when I say you have to have some balls to go behind a door that you have no idea what's on the other side of it, like people, we got to help this kid. And, and, uh, I just think we need to put football aside, and we don't even need to think about a playing career right now. We need to think about getting this kid help, putting him around family members who will not hurt him, put him around uh, adults that have his best interests. If that is sending him back home and his his family taking care of him, then that's what you got to do. Uh, but at the end of the day, man, I pray for him. Uh, I pray for his family. I hope he gets right. Uh, I, I, this is terrible, man. To see that video, it, it was, it, it sent chills because I was like, man, there's no way. Like doing this alone is really telling me that he has serious issues. And like I said, I'm not saying that that doing it with somebody else is right, but you by yourself is insane. Like yeah. that, yeah, that I get, is. I get what you're saying. Mind blowing. It's it's mind blowing. Yeah, and, and I I like I like how you said that too. And then uh, on top of that, I think Matt Rule did handle the the situation really well too. Uh, absolutely, so I, yeah. I, I can appreciate how he did that. Yeah, maybe, Matt, maybe we shouldn't have had that one in the two minute drill because we definitely both had quite a bit to say on that. One. <laughs> yeah, Matt Rule definitely did handle in the in the most respectful way. Then obviously he's twenty one years old for crying out loud. I mean, yeah, I I'm not I'm gonna go to the next topic just because I know I'm gonna go. But Arizona Cardinals seem to have given up. Obviously, star and release. Colt McCoy. Then I know the Cardinals released Colt McCoy um, at practice, of course. Then I know the re- it was most likely option for Clay- Clayton Toon or the recently acquired Joshua Dobbs, who came to the Cardinals with a trade with the Cleveland Browns last week. Then, Josh, were you kind of surprised that they cut him, or did you think that this was a time bomb ticking? I was a little bit surprised, but from what I've heard and what I've seen from Colt, he really can't pass the ball too well yeah. anymore. Anyways, it just doesn't look like he's got it in him. Preseason um, stats didn't look great. Yeah, and and just looking at at what they're doing right now too, I think it's smart for them just to you know, hey, if if you have faith in Kyler, you know, keep on top of him, make sure he's doing his his homework and stuff too, uh, you know, and, and studying film and stuff and keeping himself fresh and ready to go when his time does come, but. It, it it definitely kind of looks like like they're not really trying too much. I mean, I didn't yeah. see them really try to go after anything special this off season or anything like that. Uh, I think they did pretty well in the draft overall. I don't think they did a bad job there. Um, but yeah, I mean, I I don't think they're going to have a whole lot. They're not going to play Kyler Murray, which, like I said, I think can, is is probably a smart decision. Let him heal up and and see what he can do and see what what he's he's going to give you. But other than that, I don't know. I mean, I just it, it was a little shocking to see them cut Colt McCoy out of the three quarterbacks. I, I feel like keeping that veteran 
uh, guy around at the very least for the leadership would have been a smarter move. But we'll see what they're able to put together. I think they're going to be the worst team in the NFL this year. I think they didn't want to play Kyle, Kyle Murray just because of the way that he dressed to practice. I think that's my thing. <laughs> Blake, Blake what, do you, what do you got to say about Colt McCoy leaving? Man, look, crafty veteran, right? Uh, I just think that they didn't think that Colt was going to win a mini football game. So maybe bring in a young guy. Uh, and and give him an opportunity to make some plays. Uh, Dobbs got traded there, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I look the way he uh, the way he played for Tennessee. You know, I, I think there's a little bit of it was Tennessee, right? Yeah, yep. yeah. He played for Tennessee. Yeah, yeah. Uh, that, there's a little bit of promise there. I mean, he's probably not going to take you to the playoffs or anything, but uh, he can win you some football games. And uh, I think he's better than a lot I, of backup quarterbacks in the league, really. Absolutely, and he can yeah. use his legs. And uh, we'll see. I think he, uh, Tune, if that's his name, right? Tune. Uh, yeah, I think from he's a, Houston. Yeah, yeah, he's he's a, a rookie, if I remember right, too. So yeah, yeah, we'll we'll see what he's able to put together. Yeah, absolutely. Now going to the next topic, I know John the rule around Oz, but Jonathan Taylor, the Colts are unable to find a valuable trade for him. Then he remains on the PUP list. Then I know there was a little bit of a rumor that he was talking with the Green Bay Packers that he could potentially be really? possibly going with the Packers. Like, I know it's not a big chirp, but, I mean, there's definitely something. But, Blake, I know, obviously, with Jonathan Taylor being on the PUP list, and I know he's still eligible to be traded somewhere. Do you think that, obviously, like I mentioned with him possibly talking with the Packers, do you think that could be a potential shot that he can land, or what do you think could be his potential? Yeah, like I would like the Packers, and I don't think the Colts are going to go AFC with him. Like no. I'm, I, the more I look at it, I just don't think they they ship him to another AFC team. Uh, I could see the Packers, man. Like I think that would give Jordan Love some help. Uh, but once again, man, I'm going to double down on this. I think the Colts are a disaster of a franchise. I, I think they are a dumpster fire, and uh, it, it really started with shipping Peyton off and the handling of Andrew Luck and not establishing a legitimate offensive line around a guy that could have been a 15-year all-pro guy, one of the greatest to ever do it in the sport, and you just absolutely drop the ball with everything about that situation. And now it's led to this where you had to bring in a Phillip Rivers and then you turn to a Matt Ryan, and now you drafted a guy that is raw as hell and you have no idea what he's going to be like because the dude was at Florida. I think he's talented, but there was some things at Florida that just just red flag after red flag for me, man. So I just think this, this organization just mishandles so much, and I understand why he wants to get out. Like, I would want to get out of that situation, too. I think he he looks at it as it being a loser situation. He doesn't have many years left in the league because we all know that running backs, their shelf life in the NFL is very short. And uh, I just think that he wants to take his prime years and he wants to go to a contender. Uh, And I could see Green Bay, man. I'm cool with that. I think that would be a nice landing spot for him. And, And I think it would take a lot of the heat off of Jordan Love, like I said. So. What are you going to uh, do then if he if he goes over there and uh, with uh, uh, why, why am I Aaron Jones Aaron Jones and uh, AJ Dillon? Yeah, yeah, that's true. Um, that's the only thing that I don't really like about yeah. that because I like I like Jones in the backfield a lot. Yeah, um, I I still I still wonder why the Panthers don't try to make a move. Yeah, yeah, yeah I too. agree. Like, that really just kind of blows my mind, man. Is like. You gave up Christian McCaffrey, and now, like, what do you have back there? Like, get get Bryce Young some help, man. Like, like, go make a move. Get get good again. Like, the the Panthers, they got a defense. They just need a little help on offense, man. Their defense isn't terrible. Yeah. Uh, you got to get some playmakers around Bryce Young. Yeah. Absolutely. No. Yeah. I mean, ultimately, I look at this situation. I see, you know, it's it's. I said this early on, and it's starting to smell a little bit more like what we saw over there with Lamar Jackson, but with a, a more dysfunctional uh, head office. You know, I think this is. I think I can blame more of this on the Colts than on the player himself. And so, I, I don't know. It, it sucks that they they haven't. And uh, if you've drafted him in the in any kind of fantasy draft, I feel bad for you. Yeah. Um, just because it's it's probably not going to look too good for you. He's not going to play for a little while. But yeah, I mean, it's it's kind of just shocking to me that 
that you know they couldn't find somewhere somebody that wants to pick him up and and willing to to give him a you know a pretty penny for it too that just doesn't make sense to me absolutely but going on to our last topic for two minute drill obviously uh excuse me yeah Patriot Patriots Patriots wave zappy then I know Bill Belichick had a lot of words to say when he waved zappy but the main thing that stuck out to me was he had plenty of other players to choose from when cutting down his roster the reality of his is he saw plenty of Zappy this summer, and he didn't love what he saw. Now, Josh, I know obviously Zappy's been around. What do you necessarily think was running through Zappy's mind when he got when he got told that he wasn't going to be a New England Patriot anymore? Yeah, I mean, apparently there was something that they didn't see, but we all saw what Zappy did for him last year and yeah, kind of bringing exactly. a little bit of life into that quarterback room. And exactly. It shows to me that maybe they're willing to, to ride it out with Mac and see what Mac's able to put together. Maybe Mac's looking a lot better this offseason. Uh, I, I can put my, my, my uh, vote behind Mac. I think I, I like him overall. I mean, there's certain things that he's done that a lot of guys don't like. But as a, as a player, I mean, I don't, I don't know. I don't see a whole lot that I can really hate on the dude, but it's just it was kind of shocking to me because that was your backup quarterback. That was the dude that really helped you out last year. And, like I said, gave life to that quarterback room. So it was shocking to hear. It was shocking news. Absolutely. The only thing that Mac Jones needs to do is stay on his feet when he's running on a free on a free field with no one around him, <laughs> around the middle of the field. But um, That and stop kicking kicking dudes. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah. Blake, what do you think about all this? Do you like Zappy better than Jones, or are you kind of no, – I, I don't. I don't like him better. But now I'm looking at the quarterback room, and you've what they've got one quarterback on the roster right now because they Pretty cut much. both of their backups. Yep. Um, so I mean, I don't know the move right here by Bill Belichick, and I'm starting to think that Tom Brady was really the brains of that operation. Yep. Uh, it's it's starting to show that uh, people were people were always on Tom about being a system quarterback. And uh, it was always uh, Bill Belichick's plan, and and he was the mastermind of it. But it's starting to look like maybe Tom Brady was the mastermind of it all. So uh, I'm not really sure why they cut Zappy. Maybe it come down to a business decision or something. I don't know. Uh, it was kind of shocking to me when I read it yesterday. So and look, I think Mac Jones is the guy for you. I think he's very talented. Uh, I think the the Patriots have to go. And and get guys, man. They don't have they don't have dudes to help him. All right, like that that wide receiving core was atrocious. Mm. I mean, horrible yes. his first two years. Yes. So uh, you you've got to get him some help and some guys to catch the football. Did they bring anybody in in the off season? Um, not really. Not not, not anything of. big. That was the, that was yeah. one thing that I was really disappointed with them. I mean, I, I they brought in Zeke. But I don't think he's going to be much help. I think you stick gonna, with Ramondre. He ain't going to do anything. Yeah, he's washed up. I'm, yep. I'm not big on Zeke. Uh, yeah, so I think he's just – look, get Mac Jones out of the cold weather. Get him out. Just send him somewhere. Uh, he doesn't want to be up there in that cold weather. Nope. Uh, <laughs> Miami, <laughs> Miami might need a new quarterback, you know, if uh, if they're up, their starting quarterback breaks. Hey, Arizona's hey, nice. Uh, uh, no. There we go. Uh, that they just paid Kyler all that money. Though. Yeah, I know. Yeah, they're gonna they're gonna have to figure out something to do with that contract before they get rid of him. Yeah, they do. Insane, bro. That's insane. They paid him all that money just How to play much Call was it of again? Duty. Yeah, a lot of money. <laughs> yeah, more just than just to what? play Call of Duty. Yeah, a yeah, lot of exactly. money. But that's wrapping up our two minute drill, Josh. Back to you. All right, uh, guys, let's go over our fantasy draft real quick because we were kind of uh, I was I was more or less stepping in representing us as a show for the Belly Up Sports Fantasy Football uh, League going on. We're gonna have all kinds of updates. We might have other guys on to kind of talk a little bit of smack, see what we can do, uh, and then of course throughout the season, I'll kind of get your guys' inputs on if we need roster changes and stuff but i kind of wanted to share okay. our progress and what we were able to put together in the draft so i'll start off with the starting lineup and what we were able to put together we got aaron Rodgers as our quarterback i was able to pick him up in the i think he was the ninth ninth quarterback that came off the board which was pretty late i mean i was seeing the quarterbacks being taken early there's 14 different teams in this league so it was really tough uh i wasn't able to stick to my strategy at all uh in in this league and so it, it was tough seeing uh, seeing uh, all the quarterbacks come off the board 
I went ahead and I was able to wait until the fourth round and pick him up, if I remember right. Uh, so that was that was good news. We got Aaron Rodgers at quarterback. I was able to pick up Nick Chubb and DeAndre Swift as the two running backs. Uh, so that was kind of nice to be able to see a couple of good running backs okay. being able to come come off the board there. Uh, at wide receiver, we got uh, let's see here. We've got George Pickens, and then we also got Devonte Smith. Uh, as two of the, the wide receivers that we got listed on there. And then George Kittle at the tight end position. And then for our flex positions, we got uh, Jahan Dotson uh, and then also Khalil Herbert, uh, f- uh, running back from uh, Chicago. Chicago. So we were able to pick, pick him up as well as another running back on the roster. Got Harrison Butker as our kicker and then picked up that Pittsburgh defense in the second-to-last uh, pick uh, you know, for the for, uh, second to last round there. Uh, so able to pick up a pretty decent d- uh, defense on top of that. On our bench, we got <coughs> Kenny Pickett. Uh, we've got Chubba uh, Hubbard. Oh, wait, is that Chubba? Uh, yeah, Chubba, Chubba Hubbard. Hubbard. Uh, and then we also have, uh, let's see here, we've got Nico Collins and then Traylon Burks. And then we also have Gerald Everett from the the Chargers as well. So we were able to pick up a pretty decent roster. Uh, I was I was pretty happy with what we what we were able to put together. Uh, right now, I think we're sitting at like forty nine percent chance, a pretty much split split chance to to beat the uh, high low sports guys over there this uh, in the in the first game of the season. Um, but I know I wasn't able to get you guys' help a whole lot. We had a three minute timer on a lot, but. Uh, Overall, not too bad of a of a draft overall for for the guys we were able to put together. And like I said, it was it was tough too because like fourteen guys, all the big players were coming off the board over and over again. And just every round seemed like yeah. I was getting sniped left and right. There was several times where I was trying to pick somebody up. I the where I fell in the in the draft, I think I was eighth, and so I was like, you know what, I think I want to pick up Kelsey. Uh, for the and it's crazy in the first round, but I've been seeing him go really fast. And the the thought process behind it was that. It's a wide receiver, uh, you know, a wide receiver value out of a tight end, and so I was like, man, I, I need to pick him up, I think. And so it got down to it, and I was seeing the running backs that were taken. I wanted CMC, but he got taken. Uh, and then you know, a lot of these bigger bigger names. I was like, you know what, I'm going to take Kelsey. That got sniped from me. Uh, and then you know, there's a few others too that kind of kept on going through. Like, dang, that was that was what I was going to go for, and it didn't even end up falling to me. But uh, overall, where do you grade, grade the draft, boys? I like it. Yeah, I'll, I'll give you a I'll give you a solid B. I like yeah. it. All right. Yeah, I, I, I really I really like the Aaron Rodgers that late. Yeah, I, I think he's going to do damage in New York. Yeah, yeah. Um, well, and then looking at it too, his his weapons, what he's able to put together there. I think he looked he looked like he was really happy for one. Oh, he was. Uh, and I feel it. like he's got a really good team chemistry in it. We we saw a little bit of fire in him in the in the preseason too. I forget what the player's name was. Or we saw him mic'd up and was having a little bit of banter in there. So yeah. you saw a little bit of fire back into to Aaron's veins, and so that was kind of nice to see. I was I was excited with that, and so yeah, I mean seeing him fall, I thought you know what, I was trying to wait until fifth or sixth round to pick up a quarterback, um, but with all the guys that were getting uh, picked up already, I saw Aaron Rodgers sitting there and he was like the third projected on the, on the queue. I was like, all right, well, I mean, I'm looking around at the guys that are taking quarterbacks already. I feel like I got a good chance of getting Aaron Rodgers. I'm going to pick him up and went ahead and took him off the, off the board real quick. And so, yeah, I was, I was happy to be able to pick him up that late. I feel like this is definitely like, this is definitely a new Aaron Rodgers, obviously with being in green Bay for so long. I know he just he just wasn't happy. And then now, obviously, the season hasn't even started yet officially, and he's happier than heck. Yeah. So I I think this is going to be a definitely a new beginning for Aaron Rodgers. I think like I'm not saying it's going to make the Super Bowl, but if he doesn't, then it's definitely going to be a ticking time bomb for him. I was I was close to taking you know Baker Mayfield as our starting quarterback oh, until I heard what brother. what Blake had to say about him. So no, I'm just kidding. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Baker, who? <laughs> nah, but uh, yeah, I was oh, oh, like I said, overall, uh, pretty happy with that. We're gonna try to keep some updates here on this show, and then overall on the uh, Belly Up Fantasy Live show, we're gonna have some updates weekly from Chase and Kevin over there. Uh, so kind of keeping us up to date with it. So make sure to stay tuned for that fantasy uh, matchups and all that kind of stuff too. We're gonna have to make sure to to kind of keep you guys updated and see what we can pull off here in the, in the first uh, little league that we're putting in first year for the league that we're putting together here. Um, but a lot of fun, a lot of things kind of cooking, a lot of things happening. Uh, that's pretty much all we have for today. So I want to remind everybody, uh, first of all, make sure to hit that subscribe button. I don't know what we're sitting at exactly right now, but uh, like I said, we're, we were hoping we can reach that 5,000 mark before this Saturday. So 
if we aren't already there, make sure to get us up there. And if we are already there, just bump us up even even further. Uh, we can we can definitely help you. So hit that subscribe button. You can also hit that like button and sh- and uh, share. Why not? And uh, you can always follow us on social media. We're on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, all that fun stuff. So go check us out on social media and show us a little love over there too. Uh, we thank everybody so much for watching, for listening. We want you to tune in on Saturday morning at 8.30 a.m. Central Standard Time, and you can tune in with us. We're going to be live talking about uh, the preview for all of the, our top five games on Saturday for Saturday's slate and college football season is finally among us, and so it's a very exciting time of the year. Like I said, we're going to have Blaine Crane on from the Crane & Company uh, show over there with the Daily Wire, so uh, three guys that, that I think all three of us love quite a bit, so it's a lot of fun being, being able to get him on with us live. Um, but guys, that's like I said, that's all we have. We thank everybody so much for your support. If you're listening on Apple Podcasts, make sure you give us a five-star review. That's the best way to help us out over there. And until next time.